Zach. Hi, buddy. Hello. I guess I'm supposed to sit up here and be interested. I'm new. Actually, you guys are good. Is this thing on? No. Perfect. How are we doing so far? Ba, 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 ba. It is kind of on. A little bit, huh? Anybody hear that? Yep. Any yeah. sound back here? Does anyone care? I don't. <laughs> How are we doing so far? Sure, the one in the laser. <laughs> and this sticks. Oh well. Okay, how about this one? Let's see. We're gonna we're on tour. Ba 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 ba. But that ain't working. Oh <coughs> no, come on, leave it up. This is if you could hear it right in my eyes. Because <laughs> that way, you know, get those scissors. Yes, say yes, for God's sake. Just <laughs> Oh boy. Hi everybody. I'm Jim Cummings and I have a really weird, funny job. <laughs> and I'm glad I hope sort of everybody likes it and stuff like that. Can anybody hear me? Is this thing on? Can yeah. we turn this up? I bet we could, huh? Is there, are you Mr. Mr. Audio Video Man? Are you out there somewhere? The magic <laughs> I know her. <laughs> Could, uh, is there any way to get this turned up, Christine? Can you think? Well, I, I mean, I would do it. So I don't. It's a mixing board. How about a mixing board? I bet there's a volume knob. Is it, don't, you, don't you want it a little louder? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, so it's type of vocal cord. Here we go. There's someone knows how to use one of these. I know. Okay. <laughs> 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 Say some stuff in the mic. Cool. I think this is supposed to be the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to turn stuff up until I can hear you. Testing, testing. Okay, hi, hi. No. Tell me when. When. No. <laughs> no, no. Okay. We good? Better? That's a little better. Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. Nope. Yes. Maybe. 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 How about a little? What about? Turn faster. Some DJ going on here, maybe? Yeah. Is is there an AV guy? This one goes to the left. Yeah, he's doing really well. Yeah, seriously. Oh, whoa. Okay. All right. Now they can hear us everywhere. <laughs> They're doomed, I tell you, doomed. Oh, can you turn that down? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, hi. I'm pretty sure this is the Q&A part. I'll try to do the A's if you guys can come up with the Q's. K. <laughs> There's a Q now. I'm sure you guys this all the time. Mm. Do you know there's a bunch of them? Pooh and Tigger are in their own sort of category, you know what I mean? You know, they're the evergreens, they've been around since, uh, from, from, you know, literature, I guess in the 20s. And then, um, so they're kind of like off to the side, you know, they're, they're in their own little stratosphere and then, um, Taz is in there too, but he's in like the basement. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't know. I, I sure I don't. I, there's a duck I, I'm pretty fond of out there. Uh, he wears a cape, and um, uh, I like that dude. And you know, honestly, one of my favorites uh, of like movie guys would be Ray from Princess and the Frog. Um, I just, because it had everything that I, I mean, you know, New Orleans my adopted town, and uh, and um, my little girl Grace, well, she's eight and, a, eight and a half now, and when she was four, the opening of the movie, like, came out, and she looked just like Princess Tiana. I mean, it was like, you could not have told her she wasn't Princess Tiana, and she is, uh, <laughs> still, <laughs> and uh, so that, you know, that was very dear to my heart, plus the Cajun music, the the Zydeco and everything, you know, like I say, New Orleans is my favorite place. And it even had food, damn. 
you know, so, uh, I mean, I was a happy goof for that one. And then uh, maybe a little bit more recently would be uh, uh, Hondo Onaka from uh, Clone Wars, Star Wars. I don't know if anybody says, saw that show. I have a hat about it. But, <laughs> but um, I don't know if that answered the question, but there's a lot of answers to that question. It's like, you know, what's, what is your favorite kid? Well, all of them. <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Anybody else? Ah, you're very, you look very curious. Uh, no, <laughs> she's like, ah, yeah, yeah, not look at me. But, uh, yes, indeed, yes. Did you ever have a job that you really hated? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't in voiceover. <laughs> I used to unload 100 pound sacks of concrete off a train car. That was fun. <laughs> What else? What else? I worked for Miller the Killer and you crawl around underneath houses spraying for termites. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was a pretty good one. And what else? What else? Oh yeah, I sold knives and junk and pool cues door to door. That was good. Sold encyclopedias. That was a blast. <laughs> I actually didn't mind being a deckhand on a riverboat because I, I got to meet a lot of cool people and uh, learn how to do a Cajun accent apparently. And uh, <laughs> but vo voiceover. I'm just kidding. I mean, I know you meant voiceover. There was a there was a movie that uh, I I was actually. It was they actually misspelled my name uh, in the credits. It was Tim Cummings. My name is Tim Cummings, and I was like, perfect. That's okay. And it was uh, it was this horrible movie. Uh, Stephen King. It was from a Stephen King short story called The Mangler. And boy, did you ever not see it. Oh my God, I forgot the garbage pill kids. They're in there too. Yeah, see, she's going, ah. You know, looked like a, she acted like a bird just crapped on her head. Ah. And all I had to do was say, garbage pill kids, ha! And yeah, so that, that was a really good one too. But uh, no, The Mangler, and I'm not kidding you, it was like, a, it, was a, it was one of those short stories that it's like, why did they make this into a movie? What, were they running out, you know? And I'm not kidding you, it was, a, it was a, 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 I think it was like a dry cleaning plant. Water you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And it was like during the Industrial Revolution. I'm so sorry you knew this answer. <laughs> and um, I apologize to everyone who accidentally wasted that hour. Um, and yeah, it was like a, it was a, like I said, it was a, an industrial strength laundry press. I mean, what was the matter with Christine? Oh, I couldn't have been in Christine. No, I had to be the evil ironing board. Um, <laughs> And we had to layer it, and it was like, and then another, then that was like one layer, and then another one was, and then the third one was, I'm a little laundry press. Uh, actually, no way, that wasn't it, it was something else. But anyway, and it took like all night, you know, and I'm like, what the hell? You know, and like 14 people saw it, and Mr. Lucky here is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you rock. But yeah, so that one that one qualifies in the actual showbiz voiceover realm. So yeah, sorry. Gotta air the room out after that little speech. But uh yes, 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 sir, yes. Uh, I can't hear you, sorry. Oh, you mean like is there a uh, character out there that I wish that I was doing? You mean or something? Uh, I'd probably be a hell of a good president, but that's not really. <laughs> it's not the same, is it? No, uh, no, geez, I don't think so. No, I, I just, I'm, I'm pretty happy. There's, there's, you know, there's a lot of. I wish I could dunk a basketball, but that's, see, that's still not the exact same. It's just not the same. No, I, I guess I'm pretty happy. I wonder if I'd have been Homer Simpson. I think I was sick when they uh, auditioned for that. Don't get sick when they're auditioning for the original for The Simpsons. I wouldn't have been as good as Dan anyway, but what the hell. You know, I could have been the, you know, I could have been his uh, ironing board. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> Oh, um, wow, read, read up, uh, huh. <laughs> Why, can you arrange this? <laughs> she 
it is good. No, I can't think of anything. I, I don't know. It, it, yeah, um, geez, I don't know. Would have been fun to be Gollum, I think. <laughs> but I don't know. But uh, you know, I, I just didn't even get a. Doesn't he look like James Carvel, that one guy? I mean, <laughs> I, I saw him and I went, "Wow, that's freaky." Yeah, I, I didn't know that Carvel uh, could do that accent. But what? Uh, there was another question somewhere. Yes, yes, sir, right there. Um, my, my sister and I always love, you know, following voice actors and notice how, like, we feel like it's both probably the most inbred field out there because it feels like there's only, like, five or six people in the entire field. Oh, wow, there's a lot now. I, I wish you were right. <laughs> I guess my question is, did you ever feel like that sometimes you were seeing a lot of certain other people a lot in your field, like you were working with other people Way too often, or if there's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, Paulson, get out of here. <laughs> the hell? Frank Welker, my butt. <laughs> what the hell? Tress McNeil, oh, fine. No, I mean, no, <laughs> no, they're all, we're all kind of butts, you know? It's, uh, we all, we're all, uh, we all get along pretty well, you know? It's, uh, um, yeah, you know, I mean, some people are just you know, ubiquitous, and, and I think it's a weird thing, I mean, I think it's like a cycle thing, like for a while I was doing every cartoon in the world, and, and it's an odd little thing, I, I, I landed a couple of movie gigs, uh, you know, knock on wood, I, I take them every day, but then I didn't do like TV animation for a while, and now I'm sliding back into that, so I don't, I don't know, I think it's just cyclical, you know, people uh, tend to get hot or, you know, for a while, um, uh, but, uh, no, jeez, I, I, I don't think that I'm, you know, I show up and I'll go, oh, God, not Jeff Bennett again. <laughs> <laughs> DiMaggio, you know, oh, God, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> we're, we we kind of like it. We're all, we're all buddies. On the other hand, I wish I did everything. Thank you. Um, <laughs> now, is there another? <laughs> yes, please. Um, when you're home by yourself, do you ever, like, talk to yourself? No, we never do. I know, I know, I know, I know. I, 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 <laughs> Happy? <laughs> no, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I do. I, I walk around singing. Mostly, I sing like to myself. And uh, yeah, it's not a pretty side at all. <laughs> it's like, yeah, my daughter said that. Um, Daddy, yeah, they can hear you <laughs> sometimes <laughs> when you're in the bathroom singing. <laughs> Betsy next door. She <laughs> Was she enjoying it? <laughs> so yeah, I guess the answer, that would be a large yes <laughs> in the back. Well, Miss Astute Observer, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know, I gotta tell you, I, 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 when I, I was a kid when that, the original came out, so it was not like I was prejudiced in my, my, my own favor or anything, but I thought King Louis was like it in First Jungle Book. I mean, my, 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 my. in fact, last when I got married, I, I hired Sam Butera, uh, the actual band, to play at my wedding, seriously, yeah. Yeah, and then I got up and sang with the dude. And he offered me a gig, and I go, man, I'm hiring you. When the hell? <laughs> Sammy Jeff, where were you like 10, 12 years ago when I could have really used it, man? <laughs> you know, and um, uh, so, uh, you know, I was nuts about Louis Prima, you know, and um, the thing is, they do this, uh, there's sort of a mini tradition, if you will, um, uh, well, King Louis is a really good example, and some, maybe to an extent, Robin Williams and, uh, gosh, uh, Anika Noni Rose. I mean, a lot of the princesses, you know, they, what, what I'm getting at is they, when they do the animation, they slightly characterize the actor's face who's, who's doing the voice, uh, you know, and uh, they kind of did that with King Louis, you know, the original, and of course, Louis Prima, God bless him, he's passed away, and his wife, because of the, uh, I, I don't remember the name, there's something to do with the, the, the branding of the image of the face of the name of the person. And she said, well, you know, no. And it kind of gave her like veto power for some reason. And, and bless her heart, she just said, 
no, 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 you can't put King Louie in there. That my husband's gone, and you know, I respect your wishes. I, I, I think it was a little much ado about not, maybe not nothing, but I, I, I would have let him in there. I would have said, yeah, oh yeah, that'd be fun, you know, have, a, have somebody else carry on Louie's role, but that's me. Well, we're starting feedback, huh? We, yeah, I don't want to humana humana. Ba da ba doom ba 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 I'm talking about Shaft. Anyway, that was my that was my professional uh, mic check. How are we doing? Well, I don't think we're. Yeah, that's good, man. We're not ringing. You hear that ring? We're starting to ring. It's probably the, uh, my head's hollow. It rings. It's an echo. All right. Thank you, sir. Well, yeah, by all means, turn it down now again. I'm going to kill this guy. <laughs> Thank you. No, it was just ringing. A little reverb. All right, where the Did I get a little echo? Well, since my baby left me. You got to get that wink, wink. Okay. All right, we're back. Hi. Yes, sir, in the back. Dr. Ivo will not release any audio books yet. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, uh, it's funny, uh, in Wreck-It Ralph, um, I, he, he was there, but, and he had a few lines, but, uh, you, you, remember, you guys saw Wreck-It Ralph. That was a cool movie. That was a cool movie or what? And uh, it was, it was, I'm not all right. But it was, uh, he had a few lines and then, uh, you know, it just didn't work. It, he wasn't necessary, so they kind of cut him out. But I'm, I think I'm in the pledge. And, uh, of course, that, well, that was Robotnik. But then I had a couple other things on, like a video game, boys. Game over. Or something. <laughs> you know, uh, but Robotnik, uh, no, he hasn't. He, he almost had something to say in Wreck-It Ralph, but no books, which is good. Because that's a lot of talking. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I love Paris and Oh. Did they ever sing? <laughs> Mercifully, they did not sing. <laughs> no, no, oh, no, no. Actually, Art Vitello, when we were doing Tasmania, the original show, and I can't believe they're not putting that on the air somewhere, because I thought they were funny as hell. You know, it had nothing to do with me being in it. I just thought his writing, Art Vitello, was so good. But at Taz, they, one of the shows came up, um, you know, he did these 11 minute, uh, 11 minute shows, and one came up like nine and a half minutes, and they couldn't really stretch it out. So Art Vitello made up uh, a, a fake, uh, one of those KTEL record commercials. Where Taz sings everything, you know, and it would be Taz sings Misty. You know, and uh, you know, Taz in a sensitive moment sings feelings. And so I guess the answer is yes, he does. So. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully never again. <laughs> yes, right there. Um, well, just my, you know, I like, like Pooh and Tigger. I always liked Darkwing, and uh, Don Carnage was a fun one. Uh, he's been gone for a long time now. But um, uh, just, you know, I always like it when I do a character that sings, singing is. Just, that's like where I started anyway. You know, I was a drummer and a singer, and, and it's just fun, you know? I like singing. So yeah, anybody who sings is fun. I was a lead singer for the California Raisins, but I didn't dance. Uh -huh. I was someone else. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, do you have any advice for people looking to become voice actors? Oh, sure. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Brad Pitt? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I was no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, I, uh, the way I did it, I was always in plays as a kid, you know, and I, I was always, I was saying, man, I was a really annoying kid. I, I, I was in the back of the room, you know, doing dolphins and stuff. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, I was one of those kids, like, can't we give him something? Put him on Freedom Arbital. Uh, and, uh, 
crazy little things like when I was a kid I, I would always be in community theaters and and instead of wanting to, you know trying out for the prince I'd want to be the wizard you know which is a good example and you know it just stretches you a little bit more and, and I what I, I've always said is if um, you know you do an impression of a, of a famous person and it's no good nobody has any idea who the heck it is you got a free character man that's, <laughs> you know that's a whole new dude right there and if you do a dead-on impression of your uncle or your, your mailman that's a whole new character too because who knows them <laughs> you know what I mean so uh, so you, you just kind of mix and match and um, and just get out there and do your chops and you know figure out what to do with the mic but but definitely be a sponge be a sponge um, and just do impressions and uh, you know good or bad it's 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 exercise it's working out you know it's so yeah yeah do it yeah jump in way back in the back there yes this uh, modulation like YouTube and whatnot would you say it's better to be more reserved about what projects you uh, you're in or uh, should you just put your voice out everywhere I'm sorry go ahead say it again I, I was Oh. Would you say that it's better to put your voice out in everything or be more reserved towards the more positive projects? Mm. Jeez, I don't know. God bless you. Um, God, I never thought of it. I, I don't know. I, I just, you know, usually when somebody got, like if somebody calls me to do a job or whatever, it's not like I, I don't, the only thing I would turn it down for is if it was like really, you know, something that I didn't believe in or something. I mean, I, I, uh, you know, I, I was offered as a spokesman to uh, to, uh, to be for um, you know nuke the gay whales for Satan, and I just said no. I just said no. I don't. I don't. I'm not going to do that. So I don't know if that was a yes or a no answer, but but anyway, no. I, I, you know, if it's a cool gig, I, I mean, I like it. It's I, I think of myself as a bricklayer. You know, I like to lay bricks and I like to go to work and I like it. It's fun and stuff. So so no, I. I you know, I, I don't, see with the voice, I, I think some face people can get overexposed. You know, it's like enough already, you know, with, with different people. Like uh, for a while there, all it was was, you know, anybody from Jennifer Lopez to, you know, this guy or that guy. Chris, Chris Rock had that joke about Jude Law. I was like, okay, Jude, sit down. We're down. But, uh, but who cares? I mean, they're, they're making millions anyway. But for me, uh, that's a voice. So, yeah, if I like it, I'll do it. Yeah, you know, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, um, since you voiced uh, Thor in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2, I was wondering, are there any superheroes from comic books that... What did I voice? Uh, <laughs> Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2? Yeah, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I just I asked, is, um, is there any superheroes from comic books that you love to do the voice acting for? Hmm. In an animated series or a movie? Or... Yeah, I don't know. I, I seem to... Uh... I don't know, I, I get bad guys a lot for some reason. Uh, I was Thanos for Superhero Squad, but that's, that kind of really wasn't, you know, that wasn't really a super, you know. But uh, no, it would be great. I, I, um, I always thought Wolverine would be fun, but that was back when he was short. <laughs> Remember he was short 5'2"? How did, how did he get to be like six feet tall? Anyway, no, I don't know. <laughs> The crazier the better, that you know, I, I just, you know, I, I never get, the, I, I don't ever seem to get gigs uh, uh, talking, you know, like, hi, I'm uh, the mailman and here are your stuff. No, I have to be some loony, crazy thing, you know, so it's, so anything that comes up, I'm there. But no, I, I can't really think of anything right off the bat. Maybe, yeah. I'd like to say that I think you'd make an awesome Batman. Batman? I do too. <laughs> Yeah, let's see, what, what's Christian building? Well, I'm sorry, but I won't be able to, whatever the next line is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you what? Could we do justice or something? Yeah, something, I don't know. Yeah, doomsday, I'll be doomsday. I'll beat the crap out of Superman. <laughs> uh, yes, sir, in the back, Rob Zombie, come on down. drive through and order order it in a voice or something you know I used to do that and then uh, I would get a lot of callbacks 
on my phone. Yeah. I, when I first started, a, and a, I started doing a couple uh, characters that people noticed, uh, notice I, I, um, I would get, uh, you know, I would put them on my answering machine, and then, then you know, you go away like camping or something. You come back Monday morning, and there's like 40 uh, messages on there, and, and they're all like, <laughs> "Man, that's crazy! You're right, George." <laughs> then they hang up. Because some, some guy was going, dude, you gotta call this number. It's like Darkwing Duck, or it's 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 like Taz on there. <laughs> and then you know, so no. <laughs> uh, you know, you learn those lessons pretty quickly. Yes. Um, obviously, you've worked on a lot of different projects, you know, TV and movies and videos and stuff like that. Do you, is there like a different feel for each, or do you just sort of make it all one universal? Boy, it feels the same. You know, I I always. Um, one of the big differences in that is that um, I, I like doing it with other actors there, you know, like a video game. I, I don't do that many. I do some. There's a Mr. Pandaria and, um, and uh, yeah, it's a, a really fun one. And uh, um, I'm an arms salesman in a uh, uh, the, the thing that's just very fun. But, but anyway, the, the point is that you're just flying solo. You know, nobody's there. You don't get the energy. You can't feed back, and you can't ad lib off something somebody else said because they're not there. So in that sense, I, I like it. That's what what I actually liked about the Star Wars Clone Wars. We we'd have most of the cast there, and you really, I think it's so much better. You know, um, you know, because one person inspires the next one, and and I, I mean, I can hear the difference, but but that's uh, that's probably just me. Um, so uh, y y the answer is yes and no. Uh, you know, the thing about uh, like video games is uh, you'll get a script and it's like that, and it's like man, oh man. You know, so you're there a long, long time. So that's different, as opposed to um, you know, I did this one well one thing a million years ago, and it was uh, my my interactive poo. Um, I swear to God, that was me. Yeah, in fact, Esquire Magazine, this is like 12 years ago, Esquire Magazine gave a Dubious Achievement of the Year Award, my interactive poo. Well, sure. And it was, um, yeah, and it was for little kids. It was about right when, when there's downloads and everything where the technology was starting to really kick. And it was this great little uh, Winnie the Pooh uh, doll that he would sit there and talk. And we had, to, and we did all the story. It was six months, six months long. How, how did I get on this story? Anyway, six months of thanks, horny lady. But uh, no, I'm just kidding. No, but it, it's uh, we had to. I had to go back and say every name, every name. I don't mean like all the bees. No, I have the re name for every country that is pronounceable. And, and uh, there were 24,000 something names. And so that was, that was like, oh, Shaguzi, Shaquandra, Shaboygan. And I was like, oh, sorry. You know, and so that was fun. Yeah. Oh, and you know, I can't tell you some of the names, but true story, porn tip. It's a name. <laughs> it's a name. Porn tip. <laughs> Thailand. True story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh boy, I can't hear you. She's not speaking. That'll do it. Did I who? Oh, come on. <laughs> Oh, come on. So we'll save it for the end. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm going to have a big finish. Yes. In, in the context of the energy of having other actors with you, mm -hmm. we had the privilege of seeing you last year and enjoyed you so much. And we came, we brought him back. He, he hasn't that. seen you before. And we have tried to retell your experience recording with Carol Channing. Oh. And it was so wonderful, would you mind? Oh, jeez. Which one? When she laid The one with the dead fish and the, and the baby octopus? I'm sorry? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, it was, um, well, I worked, I worked.
Chip Chippendale Rescue Rangers, old show. I was Monterey Jack, and she was uh, uh, Hello Doggy, because she was Hello Dolly on Broadway, so okay. So she, and it was kind of like a, a remake of, the, of, uh, of uh, the African Queen, where Monterey Jack and she were going down this river or something, and, and she shows up, and, uh, and I was Monterey Jack, and, and she was, was do Hello Doggy, or do Dolly, you know, Fifi. And uh, so we're doing this stuff, and she's very animated. First she has, she wears tambourines practically on her, on her, <laughs> uh, you know, r wrists, and, and, um, and she had this, uh, I guess it would be linen or whatever, whatever this loud uh, fabric would be, and it was really starched very well, and it sounded like crumpling newspaper practically because we go like this. Well, you know, sweetie, I just, you know, and you, you hear, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then Warren's going, Mrs. Channing, could you not move so very much or something? And I'm sorry, honey, I'm really animated. And she would be all over the place, and you know. And so finally, you know, and he's trying different mics and different this and different that and everything. And uh, finally, he, she just said, you know, and I, you know, theater people are like this because they're used to changing, running off stage and changing. And I've heard stories that she would, uh, uh, people have walked into to, uh, vending machines years and years ago, and she would run outside the backstage door, get something out of the vending machine, buck naked, <laughs> and zip right back in. She had to change. She goes hungry. Didn't have clothes on. <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> she had a quarter. <laughs> so, uh, so she did that. She went back in, and sure enough, she goes, "Oh, you know, sweetie, don't worry about it. It's no problem." And she stands up. She takes off her clothes, uh, her top, and she's got on a bra and about five pounds of cotton under this one. Five pounds of cotton under this one. Oh, this is marvelous. <laughs> and, you know, and she says, now we can go, now we can record. And, and I'm sitting there going, <laughs> 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 you know, and, uh, and it was funny because, you know, being so famous, she, the engineer had brought his video recorder, video camera, and he was going, And then, uh, then in the Adams, a couple years later, we did uh, Adams Family, and uh, she was Grandmama, and uh, I was Lurch. And uh, and uh, quick aside, they would send. Don't you love the fact they would messenger the scripts out to me? I was Lurch. <laughs> <laughs> I studied that all night. Uh, so uh, you know they would do. That. And you know, sure enough, you know, she was there. And she would have like two lines at the beginning of the show and two lines at the beginning of the show. But she was like Miss Trooper, you know, the show was gone, so she, she didn't want to leave the booth. So Gordon Hunt uh, was the director at that time. And uh, let's see, I'll tell you, was there Edie McClure, Rip Taylor, uh, John Aston Gomez, the original, uh, Nancy Lenari, and Pat Fraley, and uh, Dick Beals, and Let's see, Jeannie Elias, Debbie Derrickberry, Rob Paulson was in a lot of the shows, and, and we're all set. And she didn't want to leave, okay, but she didn't have any lines, and she was kind of tired. So, you know what? I think I'll just lay down on the floor. <laughs> no problem. So we got Carol Channing laying on the floor. We got that going for us. And, um, and we're all sitting around, and, will you ring? Well, you know, go, man. <laughs> Yes, uh, Yeoman. Could you order pizza in the Winnie the Pooh voice? Sure, what would you like on it? <laughs> Let me get a phone. Oh, you mean like right now? Oh, I thought you wanted me to get you a pizza. <laughs> I suppose I could, but could you be more specific? Perhaps, uh, would you like a smackle of honey? 
Oh, no, no. oh, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> that's not no, that sounds like a lousy pizza. I'm just saying. <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> so, so I guess the answer is yes, I could. <laughs> yes, right here. Uh, yes, but you would have to kill me. <laughs> By the way, I have to kill you. I, I get those confused. Anyway, uh, there's actually two out there that I don't know the names of, because they don't have the names yet. Um, and then, um, well, one, uh, I guess they're, they're working on it now. I, I think it's going to be called Sherlock Gnomes. It was a sequel to Gnomeo and Juliet. Uh, so, so that's a pretty good one. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, just... My Sophia the First is out there. It's, it's an ongoing. Yeah, it's so cute. I really like that show. And, uh, you know, I'm just in and out of a bunch of different shows like, you know, like Fish Hooks and uh, Kung Fu Panda and Penguins, Madagascar. Just, you know, in and out. Just, but, um, and there's a couple things in Fox that, uh, honestly, I don't know them. They don't, they don't have the names. So, but I'll tell you. Even though I signed a non disclosure agreement. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, yes, Miss Green Hair. Who that? Oh, fantastic. Oh, yes, you are. I couldn't see the rest of you. Stand up, Perry. Thank you. There she is now. Oh, yes. I didn't recognize you without your bill. Yes. So, actually, you're not. I was doing tactics. I believe it. I'm in that lovely stage where I cannot keep, like, I'm getting enough gigs that they're not paying enough, but Mm -hmm. But it takes away the hours of my day job, so I'm going to have a transition period. Yeah. Any advice for that? Boy, yeah, get a, get, get a job who <laughs> the boss likes you. <laughs> uh, I get, you know, I, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough one because, uh, do, where do you live? Rockland County, right outside the New York City. Oh, oh, right outside the New York Oh, okay. Well, geez, uh, uh, um, Maybe, maybe ask your agent to try and, you know, sometimes it's tough because you want to be at every audition and you want to do, you don't want to turn anybody down and leave any doors unknocked upon. But, um, yeah, well, I guess I, I, I guess it would depend on the situation of the job, you know, like if it's, like my, uh, my one daughter is, uh, had, uh, was waitressing for a while and she would just get people to cover, like if she had to zip out, you know. So yeah, it's, it's a hazard, or a, a bit of a hassle. I don't know, it's a tough call, you know? I, uh, I um, you know, I, uh, at one point, I, I, right after I started, I was doing singing telegrams. <laughs> so I don't know that, I don't know if that's a good gig for you, because they're, they're kind of erratic, but. Uh, yeah. Oh, gosh, I don't know. It's okay. Yeah, maybe, you know, uh, you know, oh, Send your evil twin to work. <laughs> That's what you want to do. I don't know how to do that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Perry. I wish I could have been more helpful. Yes. Oh, sound wizard extraordinaire. Well, I've got a question. Have you ever had any thoughts of going into like the musical stage or lending your voice to any characters? Uh, me and my friends have talked about this. Like, we did picture you as doing the voice for Audrey too in uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Oh. Like oh. Yeah, I've had my agents. Yeah, people have asked me that. I've, I've, I've thought about that. And do you have a favorite musical that you would probably see yourself voicing? Oh, boy. Being in, being in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've had, yeah, some of the people at Disney have kind of thought about that. But then, you know, uh, I guess, you know, I've got little kids and, uh, you know, going to New York would be tough. I mean, they've actually brought that up. Uh, you know, people have asked me that. Um, and I think it would be great. I'm sure the money would be fun and everything, but it was, <laughs> it's a lot like a normal job, though. I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, it's, it's, a great, it's a great thing. But you're right, that would be good. I would love to feed me. <laughs> you know, uh, that would be fun. But, uh, I, you know, boy, I, I would do it, but it would have to be almost like the, the, the right thing, you know, the right, 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 right gig. Is there any other characters that you would like to be? Um, the Phantom would be cool. That would be really cool. I would like to do that. Um, and, jeez. Uh, 
Charles Lewis with that thing, fantastic. I don't know, you know, musicals are great, but uh, you know, you gotta be right in that groove, man. You gotta be there, you gotta, it would be fun. There's a thing that I, I've worked on with a friend, uh, uh, I can't even tell you about that, but it's, it's about a Duke Ellington thing. But uh, anyway, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. Uh, do you have any uh, pet at all? I do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I have a dog and then we have a guinea pig and uh, I, a lot of turtles just around in the water and everything. My kids get a kick out of that. I live on an island, believe it or not. It sounds weird, but I do. It's not a fancy one. It's just a... Okay, it's in the middle of a puddle. Fine. <laughs> but it's... Uh... No, but yeah, I, I do. Yeah, dogs and, you know. No cats. I don't know. Cats, I don't know. But they scratch up the furniture. They're really nice when they're other people's. <laughs> you know, I like them. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. White hand man. Okay. You did um, play Tigger and Winnie the Pooh in the shows and the movies. Did you find it challenging like, whenever they would have a conversation or they argue at any time? What, I'm sorry, would I what? Did you find it tricky when they had to interact? Would you be voicing two sides of the same conversation or argument? No. No, I mean, no, I just, uh, you know, no. Did you? <laughs> Did they record one character well, and the next one? I used to with Pooh and Tigger. I used to just sit there and talk to myself. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, at once in a blue moon, I would hear somebody trail into somebody because I, I really like to cut myself off, you know, like, like it's organic. Like it sounds like really, really, really sounds like two actual people. But every now and then when they, when you, you can't literally uh, step on somebody else's sentence. And it just got... You know, it's just got a, a bit much like the, does anybody remember, I'll, I'll give an example, Bonkers, do you guys remember? It was, a, it was a show, it was a really cool show, I really dug it, and uh, I, was, I was Bonkers and his partner, and these two goobers never shut up, they, they, they just argued the whole time. And what I would do is, is uh, uh, we, we dreamt up this little technique, and I would record uh, bonkers because they really talked over each other. They really, you know, they, but, 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 lucky, I know, okay. but, but, no, you don't understand, I have to, I know, I know, just, you know, and back and forth. And so I would do bonkers, but gee, lucky, I think that we should go down to the thing, and then I'll have it, and then, and then, and then, yeah, and then I, in my ear, in my head, I would hear Lucky Piquel going, yeah, I know, but, yeah, but Bob, bonkers, you get, shut up for 10 seconds, will ya? You know, and I, and I would hear the timing in my head, and they would record bonkers, you know, uh, and then play it back, and it would be in the headphones, and then I would just insert the, and then it, then it was or, instant, like, organic or whatever you would want to, you know, made it natural. So, uh, so yes and no. Yes, I did, but we, there's a better way, you know. And you can't, and think about, I should tell you this too, animators, um, because, you know, uh, you